Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Oh My Godzilla, and welcome to my guide for the Majorat Memories mini quest. In this quest, you will be doing a good amount of divination training as you need to collect 15 memories throughout RuneScape, each granting 25k divination XP for a total of 375,000 XP in divination. On top of that, you will be awarded an extra 150k divination XP once you complete the quest. I recommend that anyone who wants to train divination quickly that they do this mini quest as soon as they hit 60 divination. Now let's go through the requirements. Just off the bat here, I'm going to say that this is a very, very long mini quest and it can take you a good five to six hours to do. And that's pretty much a given just because of the huge XP rewards that you can get. But any other than that, you need to have 60 divination and then at least 41 summoning in order to summon a macaw familiar. And then for quests, you need to have Missing Presumed Death complete, and as well as the mini quest Koshe's Troubles, which only takes about 5 minutes, so don't be intimidated by that. I have actually completed guides for both of these quests, so I'm just going to put a little annotation square around the name of them right here on the screen, so go ahead and click on those if you need to do those. For items, you don't need to have these in your backpack at all times, but just make sure that you're in your bank and they're ready to go for the most part. So you're going to need the Invitational Box, which you got from Missing Presumed Death, and then a pair of insulated boots which you can get from a Slayer Master or the Grand Exchange and then finally a Macaw Pouch if you're 41 summoning or if you're 70 summoning you have the option of using a Ravenous Locust Pouch that is up to you which one you want to use. So let's go ahead and get started with the quest here. So you're going to start in Relica exactly where you ended Koshe's Troubles mini quest. You're going to go exactly into that same house right into the basement again. So once you're in Relica, you're going to go into this house and you're going to go into the basement via the ladder right here as shown. Now once you're downstairs, go ahead and talk to Karche. You're going to go through the chat and eventually he'll make you sign a contract. And you will have to do that. And then you can go ahead and just fly through the chat and he's going to give you the engrameter or the engrameter or whatever the hell it's called. And you're going to need that for the rest of the quest. Now the quest is really going to get going here. So what you have to do is take your Engrameter meter and you have to give it 500 charges. And in order to do that, you need to store 500 memories inside of it. And then enriched memories count as two. So you, you can do that by putting in a memory from any location that requires 60 divination or higher. So I strongly recommend using the mobilizing armies location for one because it's very easily accessible. You can get there automatically with a ring of dueling and it's also connected to a spirit tree or you can use the lodestone by Uglog over there to the right. And then also because the higher your divination level the more likely you're going to get enriched memories. So you're most likely going to get enriched memories from the level 60 location as compared with say the level 70 location. And so what you're going to do is you have to charge your Engrameter meter before you get every single memory. So what you're going to do is you're going to charge it now with 500 and then you're going to go and get one memory and getting that memory is going to use your charge up. So you're going to take that memory and you're going to bring it back to Karche and then you have to come back to the mobilizing armies and charge your Engrameter meter again in order to get the second one. And you have to do this for all 15 memories. And so you can see why this is going to take quite a long time. But in the end, it is worth the divination experience. It's better than just training it normally. So it is. I recommend that you do it. And anyways, I'm going to just go and show you the locations now. I'm going to put timestamps in the description just because it might get a little bit tedious and messy. So make sure you're using timestamps for the videos. I'm going to show you all 15 of the locations starting now. So once you have charged your end meter for the first time, the memory we're going to get first is Ekthanikos. And I'm not going to pronounce any of these names right, so I apologize. And this memory is located in, in Anakra's temple. And so to get there, we're going to use the bandit lodestone to teleport there. And then run southwest, and you'll find a secret entrance here. Go ahead and climb down the ladders. And once you're in this area, you want to go into the center room. So head towards there. You're going to climb up this ladder here. And then go through the force field to the north and then up that ladder. So once you get the memory here, which you do by left clicking the Engrameter, meter, you're going to return it to Karche before you charge up your box again. 
Once you charge your box again, the second memory is located in the Desert Treasure Pyramid where you change to Ancient Magics. So you can get there pretty much instantly using a Pharaoh Scepter, but I'm going to assume that you don't have that. And so another quick way to get there is using the Lodestone to teleport to the Bandit Camp. And then simply just run southeast and then run to the back of the Desert Treasure Pyramid and enter in through the back entrance. And then go ahead and click on your box and you'll get the memory. This next memory is extremely quick and easy to get. All you need to do is teleport to Demonheim with a charged Engr meter, and you're going to run inside the castle and click on your box and you'll get Bilrak's memory. The next memory is Anakra's and she is actually located very close to the first one that we got. And so again, teleport to the bandit camp lodestone and we're going to run back to that hidden temple underground here just southeast or sorry southwest of the lodestone going through the secret entrance here and then simply run to the middle of this area and then once you're in this room here just go ahead and activate the box the next memory belongs to Hazil so what you want to do is get to the spirit tree network and we're going to teleport to the spirit tree which is south of Ardoin and so you're going to go there and you're going to run south and east and eventually you're going to find a cave. So when you find the cave that you see on screen here, you're going to go on the raft and you'll arrive here at the location. Some people had difficulty with this location saying they didn't arrive at the proper place. That means that when you completed the Hazil Cult quest, you played with the levers that are above ground all over the place here. So you have to refer to the Hazil Cult quest guide to realign those levers. So the next memory here belongs to Jalen. So we want to get to the Fairy Ring Network as quick as possible. So my favorite way is using the Tokol Zoe Ring to go to Fight Caves. However, if you don't have that, you can use the Edgeville Fairy Ring. And then you're going to use the Fairy Ring code DKS. And that's going to take you up to the way northeast of the Fremenic Province. And you're going to go to this cave over here once you arrive. Cross the Stepping Stones here and then run to the west. Go through this cave here. And then you want to run towards the middle of the room so that you can activate the engrometer and you'll get your memory. Okay, so this next memory belongs to Lamistard. So again, we're going to go to the Fairy Ring Network using whatever way you want. And we're going to go to the Fairy Ring code to DKQ. And this is going to take us to the Glockor Cave. So once you get there, you're going to run north towards the exit. As soon as you exit the cave, you're going to go west. So keep going all the way west until you find a castle. Once you find the castle, all you have to do is go in the front door and then you can use the chest and get the memory. So the next memory belongs to Lucian. So what you're going to do is home port to the Edgeville Lodestone. And from there we're just going to run towards the east, towards the Grand Exchange. And then as soon as you cross the bridge by the summoning, uh, summoning obelisk, we're going to run south towards his little hut. So once you get into the hut, just go through the doors and use the engrometer and you will get the memory. The next memory belongs to Mizarch, so his is located where you change your prayers to curses. So the quickest way to get there is to use a dig site pendant and teleport directly to the dig site, or else you can just do the Varrock Lodestone and run southeast. So go down the crane here and just run into the room here and you can get the memory. The next memory belongs to Palkira, so we're going to go to the Fairy Ring Network via whatever means you wish. And we're going to use the fairy ring code DKQ, which takes you to the Glacor Cave. Once you get to the cave, we're going to run out through the north exit. And once you're outside of the cave, you're going to run northwest up to the monument. And once you're pretty close to the monument, you should be able to get the memory. The next one is Ralvash. So what we're going to do again is go to the Fairy Ring Network and go to the Glacor Cave again. Fairy Ring code DKQ. 
And if you're a lower level for this one, you might want to bring an anti-dragon shield. Just because you have to run by some metal dragons. I was, I'm level 138 and they didn't auto attack me, so I'm not really sure what the level cutoff is. So if you're unsure, just bring the shield just in case. So what you're going to do is once you leave the Glacor Cave, you're going to run all the way north. You're going to see this little shortcut here, which you can go through. And then when you're ready, you can cross over the little pillar thing on the ground there. I, I wasn't sure that if these dragons were going to hit me or not, so I prayed magic and kind of prayed for the best. But as soon as you're inside the building, you can get the memory. Now for the next one is Slisk. All you're going to use is the invitational box. You're going to open it up and it'll teleport you to the citadel. And all you got to do is run all the way north up into the throne room and click on the box and you'll get the memory. And here's the 13th one here. I'm not even going to try to say this guy's name. You can see his name on the screen there. You're going to go to the fairy ring network here. And where we're going is Narda. So if you have a Narda teleport scroll, you don't have to do this, but the code is DLQ. So if you have a Narda teleport scroll, which you can buy from the Grand Exchange, or you can just run there and use the magic carpets from Malkarid. So you're just going to run to Narda, and it's one of the most northern houses that you're going to go into, as shown here, and you're just going to use the box and you'll get the memory. Okay, and here's the 14th. This is Zemurgles, or Zemurigle, or whatever the hell his name is, memory. You're going to need the uh, insulated boots and the macaw pouch for this one, so go ahead and summon the familiar whenever you're ready. And what we're going to do here is we're going to home port all the way to Varrock. And for this one, we're going to be running through a multi-combat armored zombie, so using your best judgment to determine or not whether you need food. If you're maxed or high level, you don't really need any. So you're going to go to the Varrock Palace, and we're going to go to the most northwestern tower. So go in this room here, we're going to climb the stairs, climb them one more time, and then go ahead and talk to Hartwin, let him teleport you. And you're going to bring you to the Chaos Altar. And note this isn't the actual Wilderness one. It's just a placeholder, I guess, for this. And then what you're going to do here is you're just going to run all the way through this little cave. So nothing special here. Just a couple of armored zombies, and that's about it. So just keep on going. There's really only one way you can go. Once you get to this part here, make sure you go through the door straight ahead. Don't Tra or trigger any of those traps there on the right. So go into this room and you're going to crawl through the pipe. From here you're going to keep on going. And you want to go all the way to the end. You want to ignore this pipe here that I was looking at. And you want to go all the way around the corner. Like so. And then into this pipe. So inspect it. And then you have to interact with your familiar and take the point of view or whatever option. So your bird will then take a look and tell you when it's safe to go. That zombie will go around the corner. You can climb through the pipe. And then you want to go to the most southern room. So through this door here and into the room and you can get the memory. Make sure you don't go in any of the other rooms or you'll get caught. Now for the final memory here, we're going to do Karshay's memory last just because it makes sense. So what you're going to do is charge the anger meter, and I want you to bring all of the lore books up that you've gotten so far with you, just so we can deal with those while we're at it. So bring your box and use it, and you'll get Karshay's memory while you're next to him. And then talk to him, and you can finish the quest. So with all of these books here that you got, you can they're pretty much going to take up bank space. If you want to read them, that's up to you. Go for it. But in the meantime, to free up bank space, we're going to put them in your bookshelf in your player-owned house. Some other things that you got, so over the course of the quest, you got 375,000 divination experience. Once you finish the quest, you get a bonus of 150,000 divination XP. So you have to train the divination in, in order to get that bonus, though. Other than that, you've unlocked two new titles, such as Pontifex and Legatus. Um, and then you also have access to a tiny Lucian pet. And then finally, you have one more cosmetic override added to your wardrobe. Thank you so much for watching my guide. If this was helpful, please give it a thumbs up. It took a long time to compile all of these clips. And if you're interested in more content, then make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thanks so much.